Uh, my name is John Hamry. I'm the president at CSIS. When we have events like this, we give a little safety announcement in advance. I'm, I'm responsible for your safety, so follow my instructions. I'm going to take care of him first, but I'm going to come back for you. Uh, if we do have to evacuate, we're going to use these exits right behind me. Stairs go down to the street. We'll take two left turns. We'll meet across the street in uh, National Geographic. I'll get ice cream, and we'll sing a song of praise for our salvation. Okay? We'll be fine. Uh, I do want to say thank you to President Macri. It's wonderful that he would come. By the way, this is, uh, this is a, an event that's sponsored by five different think tanks in Washington, and I'm very glad that my colleagues are willing to let us host it here, but it is not just CSIS. It's, it, and so the reason we asked Mac McClarty to be the official kind of welcome and host is that he transcends all think tanks in Washington, and he is the guy who's going to lead it. So Mac, let me turn to you and let's get this started. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Dr. Hamry, thank you very much uh, for making sure we're safe and for a warm introduction. Uh, my association with CSIS uh, always affords me to have the opportunity to benefit uh, from the leadership and wisdom of John Hamry in the exemplary manner in which he conducts his affairs. I think it is a joint event with uh, both Brookings, Strobe Talbot, and I have traveled uh, the Pan American Highway together. Strobe is a friend and a colleague and someone I admire and respect greatly. Michael Shifter is always very thoughtful and articulate and serious at the Inter-American Dialogue, and I'm privileged to be a co-vice chair there, and both Susan Siegel and Jane Harmon are here from their organizations, the Council of the Americas and the Wilson Center and many others. So this is a not only a distinguished group, but Mr. President, you have an overflow crowd here. Yes, sir. Uh, standing room only. Uh, let me thank each of you for joining us today. Uh, to help deepen the relationship between the nations of the Americas. And after all, strong relationships are what brought us here today. And with that in mind, I am very pleased and honored to introduce President Macri to this group. Mr. President, you've led Argentina for a short time now, a little over a year. Yet in that time, you have worked tirelessly and effectively to build trust within your country, within the international community, and specifically with the investment community. And you have transformed, changed dramatically the relationship between Argentina and the United States for the better. Today you have come from Casa Rosada to the White House for one of the first meetings with President Trump of a South American leader. It is a sign and an encouraging sign that relationships between our two countries is growing better. I'm reminded that you graduated with a civil engineering degree. Today we might pose a few questions to you about engineering more civil discourse in our country in this time of hyper-partisanship, uh, bridging some of the divides and building consensus. But despite that, you and President Trump, I think, clearly understand the mandate you have to lift the lives and improve the lives of the citizens that you're privileged to represent. And in that regard, you've made some very hard choices. You have cut agricultural export taxes dramatically. You have loosened import controls. You have unanchored the peso, settled billions in debt, paving the way to return credit markets around the world. Argentina has hosted the IMF, the World Economic Forum, and you're planning to host the WTO Ministerial. You're receiving several heads of state, including, uh, including President Xi, in the near term. This progress, this engagement on the international front certainly reminds me of the time when I had the privilege to serve in the White House to enjoy the elegance of Buenos Aires and the beauty of Bariloche, and the talent on the football fields in Argentina. President Macri was a different kind of president then. He was president of the Boca Juniors Football Club. And in case you don't know, this is a big deal in Argentina. The most popular team of football Oh, I in knew the it world. was coming. I knew it was in coming. The world. I, I, Luis. I almost Luis. feel like I need to stand up Number for one, the huh? underdog, San Lorenzo here, but I won't. We didn't get to see a game as much as we would have liked, 
But Strobe and I did get an opportunity to travel with the president to Plaza de San Martin, where he quoted a general saying, all progress is the child of time. Mr. President, we have seen what your nation can do in little more than a year, and we look forward to the progress that is still to come. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Would you make just a couple of open remarks, and then I'll jump right into the questions with you. Well, in only two years and a half, Nobody believed that Argentina could enter in a new political state. Sure. The odds were all against us. <laughs> but what nobody counted is what happened in the majority of, of the citizens of my country. They understood that 30 years or more of conflict, of confrontation, of isolation mm -hmm. didn't help at all. The contrary, we increased poverty. Today we have 30% of our country under the line of poverty. Mm -hmm. Even though we, have, we are full of natural resources, and what's more important, incredible human resources. Mm -hmm. So we understood that the way was stopping confrontation, uh, trying to recreate dialogue among us with the rest of the world, and that for that we needed a change. That populism was not anymore a solution. Was the cause of all these problems that we were facing. So that's why we surprised the world and we, we started a, a new process. As you said, it takes time. <laughs> it's not from one day to the other. Right. That no, doesn't need a, a president, it needs a magician. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not a magician. I would love to be. Many, many moments of the day, I'd love of being a magician <laughs> to make disappear some certain problems. We've all wanted that. But, but no, the problems have to be solved working, yes. working a lot. So, we are very grateful because we have received a great welcome from the whole world. Mm -hmm. As you yes. mentioned, yes. we have been receiving visitors, distinguished visitors, mm. president, prime minister, mm -hmm. the responsibles of the main companies around the world. Mm -hmm. In the next 30 days, not only I'm here, uh, just coming from the White House, but I'm going to travel next, next mm, two weeks to China, mm -hmm. to Japan, to visit Xi Jinping, Abe, and I'm receiving Merkel in June. Mm -hmm. So that shows the level of interest right. that the world has gave us to us in the last year and a half. But we still have to keep working in the mm -hmm. reforms. Uh, we're just starting. We know that we have cut inflation, but we have to reach one digit inflation. Mm -hmm. We have to keep working in cutting the fiscal deficit, creating a greater environment in, in terms of doing business, because to reduce poverty, you have to create jobs. Absolutely. Improve education, that we are all also going through a, a deep, huge debate around how to educate uh, for the future and our, and our, our kids, to uh, le leave a 19th century system and not go into a 21, yeah. 21st right. century system. No? trying to get prepared kids for jobs that w still don't exist no? because mm. the world is moving so fast that <laughs> we don't know where right. are the future jobs going, going to be. No? No, the way. So we're in, in the beginning of that process, a lot of excitement, a lot of hope in, in the country, and this shows that something is going on in Argentina. No? A couple of years ago when I, I used to come here, there was no attention <laughs> for, for Argentina. Now there's a lot of attention. That is a great challenge. No? Uh, we should we should be aware and take the opportunity. But the big difference, Mac, between this process and any previous process is that this came from the citizens' decision. Yep. Right. So it's bottom up, mm -hmm. no? and 
that gives a strength, a different strength to what other way we are doing. No? If you travel around the region or through the world and you see what is the situation of all the governments, no? what is the, the, the support of the citizens is around 20%, 15%, 25%. We, we are still having 50, more than 50% back in all these policies. And then it has not been very easy. Eh? No, we <laughs> this transition <laughs> no. process has been very hard for many, many Argentines. And I suffer with them, all the consequences of getting release of populism. It takes, it takes a lot of work. Well, I think... Uh, it is now very clear uh, to see why you have been able to make such dramatic and significant progress. And I think all of us in this room, either that have had the privilege to serve in government, diplomatic corps, and the private sector, know that change is very hard. Uh, and you are clearly committed to that. You really laid out your vision there in a very clear and yet kind of conversational manner. And it strikes me that part of your success is you, without question, take your responsibility and privilege of serving the people of your country very seriously. It's a sacred trust. But you wear that responsibility very lightly. And that is a redeeming and uh, positive commentary on how you interrelate with the people of your country and around the world. Mr. President, let's jump right into the questions, and I think uh, in keeping with that, we were talking before we came on stage with Dr. Hamry, and the President said, I'd like to just go straight to the question, no opening comments. I asked you to make a couple of comments, and you've clearly laid out again your vision in a very, very thoughtful and serious manner. So I do want to ask you about, as I did earlier, about the natural areas of cooperation of agriculture, energy, and technology. All three of those are areas that have a lot of uh, commonality between our two countries. But again, I must ask you for this standing room only crowd, how did your visit go with President Trump today? You came straight from the White House <laughs> to this meeting. Oh, it was a wonderful meeting. It was quite amazing re-encounter because- You had met him many years ago. When I was only 24. That's what I thought. <laughs> and uh, well, there was a lot of excitement, and I f we found a very friendly environment. A good reunion. Yes, a, a good reunion, yes, absolutely. And the whole team uh, hosts us for lunch, and we discuss mm -hmm. many subjects. And in every case, they were open for finding solutions. Mm -hmm. Small matters compared with the huge opportunities of integration that we have, no? Imagine that we have a very small economic tie, no? We have to go for a strong one, no? And, and I think that uh, it's natural because if you analyze which is the f first destiny that uh, Argentines choose to when they travel abroad is the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's, there's a natural friendship that we have to develop in terms of integration. And as you mentioned, there are areas in which we could help very easily. Uh, we are talking about uh, in, in consideration of many of these uh, awful policies that the populism handled in the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. One was with the energy. Right. We went from exporting to importing right. energy only for wrong policies <laughs> because Argentina is full of natural resources and we have really access now with to a, a world-class reserve in, in non-conventional shale gas, shale oil, especially shale gas, right. that uh, we have to develop. Right. And that will give us a chance to develop other industries. <coughs> right. We visited the plan of Dow Chemical in, in Freeport. Mm -hmm. Just I, I landed from Argentina, I took a, a helicopter, another helicopter, another helicopter, another plane. <laughs> After some hours, I didn't know where I was really. It was just was turning around my, my head. But I, I, wanted to, I wanted to visit the, the, the new plan of Dow Chemical because they, they are viewing 
a big opportunity of expanding in Argentina. Argentina. Mm -hmm. But only to mention that uh, with access to secure and, and a good prices, mm -hmm. energy, the chances of developing all type of industries in Argentina, uh, in the chances increases yeah. in a wonderful uh, amount. So let me tell you that with the access to your technology, because you have already developed with shale the, uh, gas in the United States. Mm -hmm. with in our rock, I think the chances are huge for your companies. The big ones are already there. Mm -hmm. The middle, the middle one and small ones, not not yet. I think that uh, they should go there, they and that should also help to continue increasing this strong economic relationship you know, in long term basis. I think that's good news. You clearly have changed the environment to be very pro-business, to be very inviting of foreign investment, uh, and I think that will serve your country well. It will obviously provide opportunities for both our country and countries around the world. Uh, let me shift a bit to the area of trade, which is a very uh, uh, important subject here in our country, as you know, and one that has been uh, hotly debated in the campaign and, and now. It seems to me Argentina is increasing your intra-regional trade. You're looking outward. Would be interested to hear your views on that and whether you had the opportunity to discuss President Trump trade in general. We didn't talk much about well, specific subjects of trade, mm -hmm. but we have first to understand that we are in different situations. Mm -hmm. good, good President point. Trump is approaching the subject from one of the, standing on one of the most open economies right. in the world. Right. And I, we are approaching the subject standing in one of the most closed economies of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are always looking for which is the real balance, no? Okay. In that, That's in the this, right word. In this <laughs> always discussed situation. But uh, obviously we, uh, we need to move uh, towards a, a, a more substantially more open economy. Mm -hmm. So we are working hard to fasten the Mercosur process. Mm -hmm. Right. We restarted and we are quite optimistic with the, our future agreement with the European Union. The same with EFTA. Mm -hmm. We are talking with Korea, with Japan. We are also talking towards a future integration between Mercosur and Pacific Alliance. Right. Right, which is so very vital. We, we view uh, that this intelligent uh, integration with the world will help a lot Argentina to uh, reestablish a, a, a good and sustainable growth. No? So we, we have already experienced being completely isolated for right. nearly a couple of decades and Too didn't long. work. Too long. So Too long. Well, obviously, this is a huge cultural change, right. and so we, we want to do it gradually. No? We want to help our, to our citizens to be ready for this integration, and, we'll, and we are dealing in that, in that way. No? We are working sector by sector, trying to find ways to gain productivity, trying to get every sector with a, its own plan, in which also a huge part of the competitiveness that they don't have is related to what the right. state doesn't right. perform. It's, no? it's important. So, yeah. so we need to, and uh, we already launched the most important infrastructure plan of our history. Here, IDB is present. It's a great friend of Argentina, Luis Alberto Moreno. It's helping a lot, together with the World Bank and, and all, all the other institutions. We are talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. Argentina right. is a huge country. It's right. among the it's ten more resources. The biggest countries right. of the world. We right. need Tremendous. roads, we need ports, we need trains, we all need airports, and we are starting to build all them. Right. By the way, in the meantime, it's a very good way to create jobs. Yep. No? Yep. Good jobs that contribute to the future. Right. Not uh, political jobs that doesn't create more than bureaucracy right. and expenses, <coughs> no? So we are excited with that and uh, we're in that process. Good. Again, it's a gradual process. Right. No? We know that after being isolated so, so many years, 
you can you can open from one day to the other, but right. it's a day by day process. Right. Well, I think a couple of key takeaways: intelligent integration, a great way to, to describe it, and I think to be bold, to have aspirational goals, but also to take it in incremental step by step shows a political savviness and a reality there that's crucial. Uh, infrastructure, perhaps you could visit with some members of our Congress in the U.S. about infrastructure projects before you leave. That might be, uh, I'm going to the Congress might be helpful and beneficial. You Give mentioned me. Luis Alberto Moreno, who is a good friend and a force for good. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet some of your team last night. It's essential for any successful leader to have a, a capable, strong team around him, and you've clearly assembled that. And I'm proud of the team I have. You, you should Very be, good you, team. You should be. That, that's a, that's a, a key element not, to success. Not like Boca Juniors, but <laughs> quite well. <winning. laughs> They're both winners are the point. Yeah. That, that's it. Let me turn to a more uh, serious subject that's in the questions from the audience. Uh, Venezuela. It's a deep concern here in our country for all the reasons you understand. Regional stability is, is clearly important to your country uh, for investment. It's important uh, in, in, this, uh, in the Americas. I know it's a complicated subject. Your foreign minister spoke about it earlier in a very eloquent and thoughtful manner, but I think our audience would appreciate your views on that. Well, uh, first, uh, I, when I first approached this subject, many years ago, mm -hmm. many people told me things cannot get worse. <laughs> yeah. But As time went by <laughs> and things got really worse. Yeah. So what I believe is that in Venezuela, you don't have any respect for human rights. Mm -hmm. That's not democracy. That's not working. We have political prisoners. Uh, they are not respecting the independence of the Congress. So I think that we have to keep demanding for elections, for the release of the prisoners. Right. And I, I'm very happy that uh, we achieved to get an agreement inside Mercosur to express that. And now with the uh, American uh, states organization that already oh, also yes, still, issue yes. mm -hmm. a, 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 a statement in that sense mm -hmm. and we have to keep working no? I, I, I believe that everybody here is worried about we are. Uh, what is going on in Venezuela we have friends who right. we are receiving people from Venezuela as never happened before in Argentina uh, in a desperate uh, trying to find a place where to recover life, and uh, well, I think that uh, obviously that's not the solution. No, mm -hmm. we need to go back to have Venezuela with a democratic government and with a lot of work to be done because the day after will be very hard, very hard. Well, thank you for your engagement on a very serious, deeply concerning, but a very complex problem. Uh, that we will work on that together. There's no doubt about that, uh, and I think you, you articulated it very well. Let me return to energy, but broaden it a bit, which again reflected the questions. You spoke of the uh, creation of stability, financial stability, job creation, your infrastructure program. You spoke in a very uh, thoughtful way about energy development. Uh, how do you see the balance uh, with the environment in Argentina? I, noted about the beauty of Bar Bariloche, Argentina is a beautiful country. How do, you how do you see balancing your energy development and your job creation with your environmental stewardship? Well, uh, the recovery of the energy market and the energy production it was based in, in two fundamentals. No? The first, energy security, mm -hmm. that is having energy when right. you need it. Right. We had been suffering <laughs> unplugged situations yeah, black for many years, blackouts, yeah. blackouts mm -hmm. for many years. Yeah. And uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, reasonable prices, competitive prices. Right. But the second is producing and consuming in a sustainable way. No? That's so we are really committed on that. We are working hard at 
the nation level, the state level, and the city level. We are leading different programs that look forward to produce huge results. I did that at the city of Buenos Aires as mayor of the city. Uh, and was very successful on the program. I think the cities have a, a very important role, taking in consideration that day by day, more and more citizens want to live in, in the big cities. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. So we have to go work hard at that level, no? To reduce energy consuming and, right. and recycle all the garbage. No? So I think that in Argentina now there is a great conscience about that and we are working all, all together in, in trying to, to be part of the solution, not of the problem. I, I think that we have been the, the first country to double the bet in Marrakech, no? and we increase our, our commitments compared to Paris. No? So we are really engaged in that. Impressive. Something about being a mayor, being close to the citizens there, that uh, focuses one's mind on the day-to-day -day problems Absolutely. and, and uh, how that relates to daily life. Absolutely. Let me let me build on that let question. Me, let me take, please. tell you something. No, please. Maybe it sounded like a joke, but I always said that being mayor should be harder than being president mm -hmm. no? because yeah. you are closer Close to, to the, the daily people, yeah. problems. I no? agree. But worse than that is being president of a football club. No? That's <laughs> so crazy that I, I, I prefer to deal with it with, with the, the, the matters I'm dealing now. You, you, you've had good training and all those experiences leading up to Absolutely. being president. Absolutely, it was a school, uh, that was my school. <laughs> that, I, you, that you graduated with a hard knocks and a diploma there, that's yes. good. Let me uh, continue that theme just a bit uh, because we have a changing political landscape in our country and I think around the world without any question. Uh, I think we would be very interested, given particularly, uh, and this again goes to the question uh, that was from the audience, as you work toward these changes that you've articulated in a very thoughtful manner and how you're going to achieve them, talk a little bit about the political landscape in Argentina, your election, how you're going to work with your, and have worked with your legislature, your Congress, uh, with your mayors and governors who have considerable influence, as you well know firsthand in Argentina. I think uh, that that's something that we, we are quite uh, we, we're quite interested in here, and it obviously uh, ha has a direct relation. We would be interested in that. Well, we are facing a midterm election, huh? right? October. We, we have those two. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everybody is looking forward to see what is going to happen. Right. Accountability. Yes. I'm really optimistic about the, what the citizens are feeling, yeah. even <laughs> though uh, I again, insist the transition had not been easy. easy. Mm -hmm. no? So no, you're doing a lot of, you're doing a lot uh, of things. This is, had been very difficult for many citizens in Argentina. Mm -hmm. and I suffer with them, all the consequences of you know, trying to build this new uh, scenario for the future. No? But still, I, I believe that uh, we're going to win the election because the will of of change is still very high. Yep. When for change. We really believe in our future. Mm -hmm. There is a great hope about the future. And let me tell you that all what we have done, we did it without having majority in both in chambers. Congress, no? mm -hmm. we, are, we have less than one sixth of the mm -hmm. Senate and one third of the Congress. Mm -hmm. We issued the laws that we needed with support of the opposition. I mean, mm -hmm. They believe that we have to settle an agreement with the holdouts and finish the, all this default period that was a disaster for the country and many other, many other <laughs> things. So that makes me quite optimistic. And the same at the governor level. No? Mm -hmm. Right. The, all the new governors have been very helpful. We have been working as a team all the definition of this huge infrastructure plan had been taking their opinion, their team's opinion in consideration. So I think that uh, the process had been quite, quite intelligent and productive no, in these 18 months. 
many things had to be improved, no? A cultural change, change takes much more time than economic change, <laughs> no? But For sure. So far, I'm, I'm very proud of the reaction. First, the citizens, no? The citizens are leading. I don't know, you may not know, we have many, well, many social conflicts on the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a strike, a national strike, and many other things. And that finally created a reaction that the, the citizens decided to, on a Saturday at 6 p.m., self, can you say, self-convoked, you can say, went to the streets to say we want to support the government, we want to keep this government in place, we want to keep the, the, the path of the changes. And that never happened before. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people all around the country. It's impossible to measure how many there were, no? Because we were in, in hundreds of squares in dozens of cities, uh, cities around the country. No? That shows that uh, it's a different energy in Argentina. So I, I, I believe that uh, uh, the changes that have started will never stop. Argentina is, is going to be, in less than 20 years, one of the <laughs> key countries in the world. And will be leading in many of the new challenges that uh, we are going to face because all the world is, is under a great stress. Unsettled, right? yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I think, uh, unfortunately, our time is is drawing nigh. You have been very uh, thoughtful and very generous to take time to visit with us today. I did not quite see the second overflow outside of our formal meeting room. Uh, I think it does show the interest uh, in Argentina, but I think it also reflects the hope that people have, encouragement about your leadership. And I think the right uh, subject or tone to, to conclude, you, you clearly referred repeatedly in your, your responses to the citizens of Argentina and how you were relating to them, whether they supported you or not, and how your changes are affecting them near term and long term. That's kind of the right track, wrong track uh, in poll and, and that we use so refer to so often in our country. What is clear is you have instilled hope and a vision for the future for Argentina. Uh, and we wish you well on, on that very much. You honor us greatly. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Very much.